Welcome back to another Control Point Information series. Today we're going to focus on, on what is a category. Now we've to date we've gone through effectively an overview. We've then gone into what is a repository and now going to go into a category. During the repository session we did mention these a little bit and this will start to become more real and, and mean more for you as you go through the, the session. Now what is a category? Uh, categories are quite handy, used for multiple different uh, purposes. We're going to go through a couple today. But the ability to search for information based on text or specific content within documents. So again, going back to the what is a repository session where I said I'm a fan of content searching. This is one of the reasons why. Um, the ability for Control Point to actually learn your information. So those high risk, high value um, information we talked about previously. So you can actually give Control Point uh, a set of documents and say, go and look for these. These are all HR documents and give Control Point those. And it will go and learn and effectively find others, brothers and sisters and, and information that is, is like this, that same concept. How, um, how else can we use uh, categories? Um, a lot of our clients uh, use it for a multitude of different things, one of uh, which is information searching. So, you know, your RTIs, your FOIs, your information searches, those types of options to sort of automate that process. A lot of people traditionally still do that, um, where they send information to the records team, to the IT team, and to the business area, and they manually go and look for it. Uh, obviously, using control point, using content um, repositories, you can actually find the content within a document. You don't have to rely on a user running through and trying to find that information uh, based on metadata, or if I'm a business area and I get too busy and go, look, I don't care about this as much as the ITI or the legal area. I'm actually just going to say oh, this is what I've found. Again, um, you take that, I suppose, onus and that uh, effort off them. Legal searches, again, a number of good examples. Uh, I remember when I used to be in council, we would go and go to court and say, this is our little box of documents, this is everything that we have. And then effectively, when we went to court, they would say, hey, here's an email from your officer stating that this was approved, even though you're saying it's not. And we would end up either trying to settle the case or losing the case and things like IT searches as well. One of the other interesting aspects as well is applying policies, which we'll talk about in a future video, but effectively um, finding certain types of information and then automatically applying policies to it. Now we're just gonna go through a bit of a demonstration of what that looks like. So again, this should look familiar, uh, hopefully by now. Categories, the next one we're gonna go through. So we're gonna click on categories and go into a little bit more about what they are. So by default, you get presented with a list. You've got the option to browse categories. You'll see here I've got a fair few uh, examples already set up. Now again, you can create this hierarchical structure however you want, and we work with clients to see exactly who's gonna use Control Point, how are they gonna use it. Uh, each one of these can have their own security for, you know, I just want RTI to have their own space to create RTI searches and then delete them when they've done searching for it, so forth and so on. So we work with clients to actually work out what that sort of pattern or what that needs to look like. But as an example right now, um, effectively I've, I've got some examples that I have set up. Now before doing that, there's also another option up the top here, search. Now I can actually search all repositories that I have ever created. So if I've created any repository, and I can actually go and look for the word wild links as example, I can actually look for this anywhere in those documents or properties or wherever I'm actually looking and bring back that there's 11 documents that I've found in the demo system that we have set up. They're all sitting in a file share by the looks of it for, for most of these. Uh, and again, I can find that wherever they're sitting. You'll see that Wild Links is mentioned as well. You know, I can actually then change that to my name. So I can search for Carl Duncan. And again, look for where either Carl and or Duncan uh, are searched. You're searching idle. So for those content manager users out there, should be relatively familiar. You can put um, exclamation marks around it. You can go and do um, and, ors, this, buts, all those types of searches. And you can see that I just narrowed my search from 11 originally down to I'm looking for exactly the word Carl Duncan, not Carl and Duncan. And I've found uh, some examples here where you know, I've been mentioned in either some test cases, some emails by the looks of it as well. So again, an option just to be able to search for something quickly. And that's effectively what we're doing with categories. So again, if I have a look at this, I've created a category for wild links. Now this is just looking for the word wild links and you can see it's actually been highlighted for me in little bold there. Now again, 
from this category I can find information. I can actually then go through and apply policies by clicking the little shield button or policy. I can go into the action menu and look at things like the properties or export this list as well is a good option for those um, people who want to effectively say this is what I found on this topic. Uh, and a plethora of other options that you can do there as well. Now having a look at that Carl Duncan example again, this is me just creating it. So I suppose using a category is more of a longer term uh, search option as opposed to a, a static one. Now this category uh, for Carl Duncan I'm looking in lots of different spots. So you can see here by repository I've got file share, exchange, uh, scrolling down there might be some more options here as well coming up. And again, I'm finding information. I can change all of those repositories if I've started this and I just want to go and look for a certain repository or users or file type that I'm looking for, uh, file size. Again, I can actually go through and narrow this down a little bit and actually, you know, just say I'm looking for stuff this year or last modified this year. And again, the ability to sort of narrow that down a little bit and say that it's been last modified and it's been less than a year and again filter those results and see if I get any results back from that. So I've gone from those 100 and something before down to 9 that matches our criteria. So think of it similar to this funnel is how I like to explain it to clients starting with your Google search to start with and then just funneling that down as, as you need to. Another example um, as I mentioned in previous videos used to work for Council and in this video um, this is an example of looking for a development application. So what we're doing here is looking specifically for um, a development number. So this is going back to that first, you know, what is a repository looking for patterns. I'm looking for a uh, material change of use for those that aren't in council, uh, 15 slash 0001 and it's a development application. So right now I can see that that is mentioned in these documents quite frequently. It is there a lot. Uh, I can see that if I go through and have a look, there's also some emails. So again, I suppose when you're looking for this type of information using categories, trying to find these high risk, high value documents, um, you've got the ability to search effectively everywhere, including the content, which, you know, if you think back to those RTI legal examples, never ever happens. And it might just be that one of these emails, for example, if I actually go and view them, is the actual critical document for you to prove right or wrong or the decision of why we approve what we did. And you can see here right now so there's an email that's been sent, it's got the same um, MCU number as before and it's got some instructions from me saying to improve this DA for this company in question. Now that may, that email may not actually be in your content manager system because let's face it, Exchange or, or email these days is a line of business system that everyone uses a lot more probably than EDMSs or shared drives uh, and effectively that could be you finding the, the needle in the haystack or, or finding that information. Now there's another section down here that's going to look familiar to the uh, people who watch the what is in a, what is a repository. These are those um, of, of interest um, high risk high value documents we were looking for. So again, financial reports. For me in this organization, want to know where all the financial reports are. So again, um, it's gone and found that these are all financial reports. Again, from here, I could say, right, I've found them. Let's move them into Content Manager or let's move them to another shared drive or let's archive them, whatever. Each business use case will be different. But effectively, I can find those high risk, high value um, information and then act upon it accordingly. Um, you know, some of these, for example, could just be keywords and metadata. Some of these could actually be a sample of uh, support renewals. Uh, you know, looking at these renewals, they might have been uploaded into Control Point and given as a sample, and then effectively said, go and find me all of the support renewals. So you've got two ways of doing it, metadata, or give Control Point something to learn off. One of the other options we talked about before as well was, this is an example of PII, so personal identifiable information. Uh, this is all the credit cards or social security numbers, for example, that are sitting within file shares or, um, or all repositories um, here as well. And effectively what that's uh, bringing back is information where there's credit card data, information that's sitting there, uh, and effectively again just allows you to look at those uh, 
lots of different options. You can see here that you know, these documents might have some, you know, again, credit card data sitting within it. Now, there are plenty of other options to go through and map credit card data to different properties. So we can actually see uh, the pattern and right here we found a credit card number, obviously fake. Um, but as an example, you can actually see that that's a credit card number or a pattern. It's a 16 digit that we talked about previously and it's finding it within these documents. Uh, again, thinking about the PCI DSS compliance or just wanting to secure your credit cards, a good way of um, finding those and, or any other pattern and then doing the same. We had an example once uh, from a client who said uh, all our credit cards are in a very secure spot. This is where it is. We actually turned on uh, the credit card pattern matching. We found a credit card sitting in a very open part of the share drive. And effectively, um, it was A, in an open spot, B, it was the CEO's credit card, and C, it was used for his work trip um, when he went to a conference. Again, we'd be able to find that information and then secure it, um, or find those patterns around social security data or um, email addresses, all those types of things. And again, looking here at the repository column, we don't care about where it is. As long as you've got those repositories created, in the repository section, you can go and search all of those repositories for anything that you want to do. And that's one of the big, I suppose, value adds and, and value proposition to Control Point is that it allows you to search across all of that information. Um, and again, a good analogy we use in the team, um, especially when doing these RTI searches or legal searches and those types of things, people like to sleep, Control Point doesn't. So it will go and find all those things for you. It will go and index all that stuff and it won't rely on a, on a human to actually you know, make an error, try and find that information and not look in the content of a document. And again, something to obviously, um, I suppose, add value to that is it's doing that for them so those people are actually freed up for searching for information. We've had some clients that have a couple of hundred searches a year, which means that the business is affected by legal searches or um, RTI searches, all those types of things. So it lets the business get on with their core business and then gives this, um, I suppose, power and control to the RTI, the legal, the IT, all the information managers to go and find all that information in an automated way. Thanks for watching.